Hiya folks, Kasori have kindly sent us this pressure cooker to review and uh, we're going to take a closer look at it and we're also going to cook some stuff up in it. So let's get going baby. Excited. Right, so this is Kasori's latest 5.7 pressure cooker. It's got 1100 watts power, which isn't really a lot at all for a cooking device nowadays. And uh, it's got this detachable anti-scalding lid. As you can see, the lid comes right the way off. And you can also, rather than just think, well, where am I gonna put it? They put a handy little slot in there where you just sit it in there if you want to. Very clever. Which is a handy little thing. Yeah. So let's have a closer look around it first. We've literally taken this out of the box for the first time and uh, we'll show you what, what it comes with. So what have we got inside, Sharon? Little measuring jug there. Right, so yeah, it comes with a jug. We've got a couple of um, spatulas in there. Very handy. And also a trivet. Yeah, lift out like that. Which is very handy yeah. as well. Yeah. And that's your maximum, wouldn't it? Your I maximum suppose. line will be up there sort of thing. So this is, again, you can remove the inner pot and that is washable in a dishwasher. dishwasher apparently and apparently so you can put that in the dishwasher although I personally wouldn't put that in there. This is the heating element underneath which sits on the base and you don't cook with that you always cook with the, the pot, pot inside. inside folks so never cook without that. Right so apparently the, the design of this thing uh, is an anti-scolding lid and it also has two lining up marks because you get a lot of people fiddling about with uh, things when they first put them up. So when you put the lid on, just line the two orange dots up and then it makes a little noise. Lock it in position. And the automatic vent automatically goes into the correct position. A lot of the other ones on the market, they don't have that where you have to manually put these into the uh, position. Yeah. That, as soon as you turn that, let's put it in the off position first. Look, and look, watch, see it automatically come over. So that's that. And if you want to do a quick release after you've done your pressure cooking, if you press that back, now I don't know if you saw that, that that's where the anti-scold yeah. thing comes in. It tips it back 30 degrees. Look, let me do that again. So it shoots the jet of steam away from you rather than directly up where you can get actually possibly get scolded. So that is a great feature there. And as I said, the lid, once it comes off, makes a little bleeping noise. You've got that little tang there, which literally just sits in there if you want to just keep it up there. But there's no real weight in that at all, as opposed to the other ones with a big, heavy lid, which I'm always a bit dubious of, Sharon, because yeah. I think you can lose balance and that could tip over. Mm. But as I say, that's got no weight in that at all. You've also got this indicator there. When it's in under pressure conditions, this little thing there sticks up in the air. So, as you can see, let's just put that on, nice and easy. Nice and Half nice. a turn to now go you know in there like locked. that. Hmm. Now you've got loads of presets on this, folks. It does apparently quite a few different things. 13 functions. Is it 13? Yeah. 13 <laughs> cooking functions, yeah. yeah. These are all your uh, rice, steam, cake, oatmeal, stew. These are all your presets and stuff like that. But this thing, you can actually, rather than use the preset, you can actually customise it. So let's say, for example, we press the meat and poultry one there, the set time for that is 35 minutes, but you might have a bigger joint you put in, Sharon. Mm, so you it. can actually increase that as well by mm. just moving up or moving down, depending on the size of your meat. So every one of these things is actually customizable as well. You've got a delay start setting where That's you can- That's a brilliant yeah, idea. Yeah, you can set that up to 24 hours in advance. Especially for people that are going out to work. Yeah, Fantastic. so you might be going out in the morning, but this thing you don't want to start cooking and leave it on all day like a slow cooker. Mm. You can set it to come on at sort of half past three and you come in at sort of four or half past four. So it's got that function as well. You've got a cooking progress bar at the top where it tells you how far into the cooking cycle you've got. And it is, as I say, a one touch display. So there's no worry about having to sort of hold two fingers down on different settings and stuff like that. So it is a one touch di uh, display. And yeah, it's a great little unit there. We're looking to put it through the test run. And uh, the first thing we got to do, Shell, is because it's a new unit, it's just give it a little test run with some right. uh, water. I have washed it all, people. Yeah, it's actually been washed. All we're going to do literally is take the lid off. We're going to pour in 750 milliliters of just regular cold water. And literally, just put the lid back on as well. Line your little dots up, as I said. Right, so we're gonna press the pressure cook button. It's on five minutes already. We can change that if we want to. But you've got the keep warm function on. This is automatically as a default setting. We're not worried about keeping it on, so we're gonna take the keep warm function off. 
and all we're going to do now is press the start button and what you'll do you get this little display come up and it will start to pressurize you haven't got to worry about turning that safety vent on because it's automatically on when you turn the lid that automatically goes on so you can't forget that so right we'll leave that for five minutes and uh, you'll get a preheating cooking function and if we had to keep warm on it would carry on the dots along there but we'll probably here we'll put it on quick release and, and we'll, just open yeah, that yeah. manually and we'll shoot the air out and that'll just clean the unit right we'll see you in five minutes folks right okay it's been uh through its cycle it says end there folks now as you can see naturally it will do a natural release the little thing is up which shows that it's under pressure but if i wanted to change that to a quick release all you do is literally just slide that and you'll see that thing tip backwards and uh, release the pressure so let's just do that there you go and you know you've got no pressure in it again when that thing actually drops down into the uh, lower position there so that's doing a quick release now and if we would have left the keep warm function on this would have still said keep warm at the end there so we didn't we turn that off so that's the reason for turning that off right we'll just let that pressure go we'll clean this out there we go that's literally just dropped down now i just missed that i'll turn the camera off but that has dropped down now which means you can now safely undo the lid with no worries whatsoever so i'll let you lift that up shall just half turn and lift it away there you go and there's our water so we're just going to empty that water out folks and then we'll start our little cooking segment Ooh, baby din -dins. right pot emptied just drop that back in there folks and now we're ready to start our recipe which what we're we doing campfire stew campfire stew folks so let's take a look at the ingredients here are the ingredients to our campfire stew for a pressure cooker a 750 gram gammon or ham joint three chopped bell peppers two onions, three cloves of garlic, one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of ground coriander, one tin of baked beans, one tin of chopped tomatoes, one tin of red kidney beans, three celery sticks chopped, two chopped carrots, eight sliced mushrooms, two tablespoons of tomato puree, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, one teaspoon of Maggi seasoning, Right, so this campfire stew, folks, is literally a one-pot wonder. You can leave it in there to do its stuff, and and it great meals. We've had this before. Not we've had the vegetarian version because Sharon's brother yeah. cooks these with corn, but we've never done it with the the gammon joint. But apparently, the pressure cooker should make it all fall apart and pull we apart. We had it a long, long time ago <laughs> in Cyprus. Our daughter made it in the slow cooker, so this is the first time for us in the pressure. In a pressure cooker, which obviously should be a lot quicker. So first of all, right, in with the uh, gammon joint. So all Sharon's gonna do is literally just plonk that in the middle. Now we've got all the ingredients already cut up here, yeah. folks, as you can see. So literally, just throw everything in. It's that simple. Celery, onion, and garlic. There we there. go. Now we've also got our drained kidney beans yeah. there. Again, any of these ingredients you don't like, you don't have to put them in. This is no. just our version. We're going in with a tin of baked beans with the juice as well. Tin tomatoes. Chopped tomatoes we're using here, yep. not plum. Our herbs and spices are all going in, again measured out and plonked straight in. Now this is our Maggie seasoning which we use, it's a lovely savoury flavour. Give a good glug of that in there folks. You could call it um, a good teaspoonful there. And just to finish off, the uh, Liam Perrins Worcestershire sauce. A good tablespoon. Yeah, so again, a little bit more than uh, the uh, Maggie seasoning. There you go, that's fantastic. Now all we're gonna do is give it a little bit of a stir around. Yeah, We've had a new spatula, Sharon. Yeah. Literally, just move it all about so it all incorporates. Ooh. Just get it all, all them, all them herbs and spices going around all the, um, all the ingredients in there, as you can see. That's the main reason there. Just pulling it around the actual gammon joint in the middle. And that's it. You, apparently, Sharon, you haven't got to add any water or oh. anything. But so, then I suppose all the juice is going to come out of all the vegetables and everything. So get your lid. Get me lid. Okay. Now, don't forget, line up your orange dots first of all, folks. So they go in. And as soon as you turn that over, that locks, that brings on your safety feature. So you haven't got to worry about forgetting to do that. So we can either press pressure cook and put the timing manually but we're not going to bother with that. 
We're going to use the meat and poultry setting, which automatically puts a set point up to 35 minutes. We're going to go with that. We're going to take off the keep warm function because we're not too worried about that. And all we're going to do then is literally press the... Uh, just to see as well that you could have a low or high. We want high. <clears throat> yeah, you can press low pressure or high, but we're, we're keeping it on high pressure. And we'll just press the start button. And that's it. That little thing now is going to come up to temperature, come up to pressure and cook for 35 minutes. And hopefully when we take the lid off, Sharon, we should have a campfire stew. Yes. Right, here we are again. We've actually been out down the road, haven't we, Sharon? Yeah. So we've been out for about half an hour. We come back, it's already done. It's released its pressure. Let's take the lid off now. Don't forget, it'll be a bit cooler than what it would be if we first opened it. Okay, baby. So turn it and lift the lid up. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that oil that's been released from that gammon, baby, look. Oh, that's lovely. Don't forget, folks, we put no liquid no. in there, Sharon, did we? No. Look at that. And now that pulled pork that is now is congealed. Oh, yeah, you put your lid in there, yeah. Look at that. Right, let's take a couple of spoonfuls out, shall we? And then we'll give it a little test. Look at that. Now, again, as I say, if you wanted to thicken that, you could put a bit of corn flour in there, shall we? Yeah. And uh, put it on for another couple of minutes and stir it around, but we're happy with that. Let's take a closer look, friends. Right, now, let's see what this tastes like, Sharon. Go on, go full metal jacket, get everything on there. Bit of meat, she's got everything on there, folks. Oh. That is still hot. <laughs> Isn't it? Oh my God. Didn't realise it was that hot. Well. Very tasty, but very hot. I've burnt my tongue. Oh yeah. Be so warned, Martin. Just be careful, I know. Well, I'm not gonna go too mad, here. Although, I'm gonna take it from the edge, that should be a bit cooler there. Oh. I've got a bit of that gammon in there, I can see it. Let's have a little go. Oh. Mmm. Oh. oh, my tongue. <laughs> that is a taste sensation. Also, you can add chilies to this to make it hot and spice it, but Frank's having this, so we're not adding chilies or nothing to it. I think it's a hit. You can taste the herbs and spices, and we didn't need any salt and pepper in it, did we? No. There's when enough you get salt in your gammon. There's enough salt in the gammon there. The different beans, the um, baked beans, and also the kidney beans. Everything's fully cooked, folks. Mm. Absolutely lovely. And keep dipping in here. And the gammon. So I'd say it's about 40 minutes in all. It is fall apart. Lovely. Well, that is our new introduction to our Kasori there. That's the 5.7 litre. It's a good size. It's not Th too big. 13 multifunctions. And the great thing is as well, as Sharon said, yeah. you can take this lid off and put it out of the way. And it's got the auto feature on there, which you haven't got. Sometimes with the other types, you can forget to put that set it and it won't build up pressure. Having all the different presets makes it nice and easy to operate. Mm. And also you can use this as a saute pan. If you put it on saute without the lid on, you can throw stuff in and, and sort no. it like mushrooms or onions and basically use it as a, as a, as a deep frying pan. Mm. Yeah, thanks for sending us that and uh, it is a good addition. Yeah. If you have an air fryer and you don't have one of these big multi-tool ones, and you want another way of cooking this, you can even do sort of, well, in a way, it's like a slow cooker, shall we? Well, it is a slow cooker as well, you it's can. A, it's a fast, you? slow cooker, if you think of it that yeah. way. Because let's cook that in sort of half an hour. Well, 40 minutes to be Say exactly, 40 yeah. minutes, where normally, if you was doing that in a slow cooker, you'd leave it on all day. And bearing in mind, it's only got 1,100 watts, you're going to be saving energy as well. So yeah. something to look for, there will be a link in the description just below this, folks. At the moment, it's on offer for under a hundred pounds. Fantastic think, bar, I think that it's is. 99 pounds. And if you're looking at those bigger ones with the big lids that go up, they cost like 200 pounds, 250 pounds or whatever. This is only less than a hundred pounds. Take advantage of that one, folks. Good size bar as well. I mean, that's only half full. Yeah. And you've seen how much ingredients has gone in there. Yeah. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. Don't forget to have a little look at our other videos. Uh, have a little binge watch of them. You'll think you'll enjoy them. And also take a look at our vlogs as well. I think you'll like them. That's more of what we get up to during the week. And that comes out on every Sunday about eight o'clock in the evening where there's a live chat box where you can have a little chat with us as well. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. We're going to finish this off now. We'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now. Bye. Happy days. I've my tongue.